I got a call from you guys, and you said, come on down and spend 10 minutes with us. I love the whole morning and the afternoon. And I want to say that I am so happy to have been a participant in your democracy uh, that you just had here. And I want to only hope that the kind of respect that you show for one another and the way that you raise your voices, we could only have that same in the Congress of the United States. I want to say, first of all, we have people in my office. We are going to sit down with your leadership team, and we are going to have a relationship. And what I know, and as soon as I know it, so will you, so you can make the kinds of decisions that are important to winning this movement and this struggle. So, we're going to have in our office a formal relationship with you in which I also call before I take actions and before we move and consult with you as the vanguard of the movement for immigration reform in the United States of America. You've demonstrated that in the past, and I know that you're going to do it in the future. And let me just say, to me, it is very clear, since my early days in the Chicago City Council back in 1986, when they first brought the Human Rights Act to the City Council, and I remember the Cardinal in Chicago saying, you can't vote for that, and I voted for it. And then they brought the Defense of Marriage Act, in 1996, where they said marriage can only be between a man and a woman, I started wondering, what are they so afraid of? If two people want to have a loving, caring relationship, it should be the purpose of government to foster and protect that loving relationship. And so this week, if you haven't seen the principles of the Hispanic Congressional Caucus that I, as chairman, helped to put together, we made sure that when we talk about unifying families and respecting families, it's respecting binational families. It's respecting families that are from the LGBT community. And we're gonna make sure it's in our bill today, it's gonna be in our bill when we finish this process. So let me, let me say to many of you, you've asked me, you said, Luis, Will you come back out to Minnesota? Will you come back out to Seattle? Will you come back out to Tucson? Will you come back out to, uh, what was it in Texas that I, I, I've been to so Austin. And we have an awesome meeting in Austin, right? Let me just say, that's why we're going to have this kind of relationship. And I will tell you one thing. If you feel I am of value to you, if you feel I am of value to you and I can be helpful in winning this fight, you have but one thing to do, exactly what you did this week. Call me, I'll cancel my schedule, whatever is on there, and I will be there. Tell me where you're fighting and tell me where you need somebody to fight along with you. with the words that I use, because I do have to go back to Washington, D.C. <laughs> but let me just say this to you. We are not going to have justice and fairness for immigrants simply because a group of politicians in Washington, D.C. get together to do it. If you leave it up to the politicians in Washington, D.C., they will fight and they will squabble and they will pit one party against another to see who can benefit and leave our immigrant community on the wayside. So let me be very clear to you today. I want a relationship with you. And I, when, when I got invited to come here, I said, I, I wanted to say so many things to you. Like I introduced the first DREAM Act in the Congress of the United States. And Josh is here. He helped us write it in our office. The DREAM Act has been in every, 
every piece of legislation that I've introduced on immigration reform. And there has always been a special pace and a special pathway and always will be for young dreamers in the United States of America. You deserve it and now you have earned that rightful place in the immigration movement of the United States. I hope to only tell you that twice, I remember when Gabi Pacheco arrived in Washington, D.C., and she took off the shoes that she used with other dreamers that had walked from Florida. And I went to jail that day. And we sat and before us, her shoes and the shoes of other dreamers, because we thought it was important to tie symbolically our movement to yours and your movement to ours. I'm going to tell you something. There has never been a happier day in my 20 years in the Congress of the United States than the moment we achieved the victory of DACA. And let me tell you why we achieved the victory of DACA. We achieved the victory of DACA because when the President of the United States came to Washington, I think it was the turning point, I have to tell you, when he came to the capital of the United States and went to the National Council of La Raza and came before 2,000 Latinos that day, and he said, I can't do it. You said, yes, you can. Yes, you can. And I got to tell you, I, I, I wasn't there, but I listened to the video, to, to the audio, and I heard your voices. And I heard the voice of my daughter, Omaira, and my daughter, Jessica, and all of the young people striving to have a better community and a better future in the United States of America. Each and every time when the dreamer went and spoke on prime time at the national convention, that wasn't an accident. That wasn't an accident. That was a tribute to your tenacity. When all of a sudden you heard the president of the United States, he did that commercial in Spanish? Yeah. Huh? What did he talk what did he talk about the economy? No. He talked about education? No. Did, did, did he talk about you know what he talked about? He said, and this is our victory, he said. I took the action of DACA because I see in these young people the same values inculcated in them that I and my wife inculcate in my own children. We win when the politicians in Washington, D.C. do not see us as undocumented, illegal people, but their children and a responsibility in this country to help us to justice and to fairness. And that's what we've been able to do. Now, do we have a long path still in front of us? I think we do. We have a tough path, but we're so much closer than we've ever been before. So I came to tell you about the things that I have done in the past, to tell you about the moments that I've been arrested so that you can one day have everything my daughter Omaida and Jessica have. Now, I gotta tell you something. Amar a tu prójimo como a ti mismo. To love your neighbor as you love yourself. You are truly our neighbors. If I love my neighbors as I love myself, and my neighbor's children can't go to the same university that my daughters go to, can't live freely in this country like my daughters. When I left this morning, Omaira and Jessica knew one thing, that their dad was going to come back home at the end of the day. And I want to make sure that you know that when you leave to go to school, when you go, that your mom and your dad is going to be there too. At the end of the day. Esto es amar a tu prójimo como a ti mismo. To make sure that they have the same rights, the same rights, and the same protections under our law that we all have. Look, we're going to get there. My office has filled out over 1,200 DACA applications. This Monday, one of the first, okay, me vino, tú sabes, me vino con la tarjetita, authorized employment. I've seen so many letters, deportation from the United States, you say, hallelujah, por fin, están aprendiendo a admitir gente a los Estados Unidos y no deportar gente a los Estados Unidos. Well, this Monday, He's going to join me in my office. 
And my challenge to all the politicians is, don't just talk about how wonderful. Hire the DACA people in your yeah. office too. And make sure that they're working well. You deserve to be at every sphere and at every level of our society, including our congressional offices. I'm going to make sure that that happens. I'm going to make sure that we have a relationship. Thank you. I want you to know that I didn't come here to tell you the things I've done to brag. I came here to tell you the things I've done to impress upon you the importance that you have had in my life and the priority that I give to your wishes and to your desires. And so I will leave. I'll go back to Chicago. Pero cuando tú de me invitan, sea a Los Angeles o a Nueva York, a Minneapolis, St. Paul, or Detroit, Woo! sepan algo, que todos los días ustedes están en mi pensamiento y en mi oficina ustedes estarán escribiendo la próxima reforma integral de la reforma de nuestro sistema de inmigración. Tendrá también tu apoyo y lo más importante, tu aceptación. Trabajen conmigo y 